Hi, in this video, we are going to show you how Villier Digital Signage software works and how you can start publishing content to a fresh display. For the demo purpose, on my left hand side, you can see an Android display showing pairing code via Villier application. And on the right hand side, this is the dashboard that you can start using for publishing content and managing screens. First of all, in the dashboard section, you can see number of screens that are online at the moment and all the offline screens. You can also map each screen on a Google map location and tag the screens so that you can see an overview of number of screens in particular area. And here you can see a gist of number of screens that are currently active. Number one step here is to go to the screens list and start pairing a new device. We'll go to the screens here and have all the list of screens that are currently active. We can see online and offline status of each screen, the content that we are playing, and the orientation of the device. To add new screen to the account, we'll go to new screen button here and add the details here. So we'll fill the pairing code, add the screen name as well, and also set a tag. Tag will allow us to easily identify screens when we have bulk number of displays. So we'll set it left side and add. In the location section, we can set the nearest location of the device, which is integrated with Google Maps. So it will be easy for you to find. We'll set the location here and also select the plan that is available. Then you can click on pair screen button and start pairing the device. We will go to the library section and start uploading content. In the library section, all the files that you have already uploaded will be displayed, along with folders for easy management of files. We can go to the upload media button and start uploading files from the PC. We will select all the files that we want to upload and open. As soon as we do that, on the right hand side, we will be able to see the files that we just uploaded. And also the files are visible in the library section now. Along with photos and videos, we can upload custom widgets to the display for making the screens more engaging. We'll go to the widget section and have a look at the available widgets. These are all the dynamic widgets that allow you to create more custom and engaging content on the display. Now we can start creating playlists from the content and publish to the displays. We'll go to the playlist section. All the playlists will be available in the list here. We'll click on the new playlist button and give it a name. Once you're given the playlist name, we can create playlist. As soon as the playlist is created, we will see three sections. On the left hand side, we will see library where we uploaded all the content and we can add new media. In the center canvas, we will be able to drag and drop widgets, images and videos and start creating a layout with the different zones. We can adjust the resolution and orientation of the layout as per the display. We'll go to the vertical section here for a vertical display and the canvas will be displayed as a vertical screen. We can give a custom resolution to the layout using custom button here. We can edit the height and width of the display. For this example, we can take a layout as a square display also and apply. So this will look like a square display, which is a 10 by 10 billboard or a 20 by 20 billboard. For our vertical display example here, we will create vertical layout and start creating zones. From the library section here, we can drag and drop media and create zones. Let's drag and drop here. We can adjust the height and width of the file and the zone. We can also set the file in full screen using this button. Now the screen will start showing this content if we publish, but there is more to that. We want to publish more files one after the other and play content. Now we can add more files to this and start creating slideshow. We can drag and drop the files to the right hand side and start creating slides. We can also click here and add new files. 
In the slide section here, we can change the duration of the slides and add transitions. It will set to all the files. We can adjust the duration of each slide or individually manage files from this button. We can also have a transition to left. Once the slideshow is ready, we can preview content before publishing to the screens. We can go to the preview button here and adjust the portrait device. It will give us a preview of how the content will run on the real display. We can also create multiple layouts and have custom zones in each layout. We can go to the new layout section here and again adjust the orientation. This time we will split the screen in three parts and play content simultaneously. We can add new files from the upload media here. Once the files are uploaded, you can drag and drop the files in the zone and give it a custom width. We can create partitions to the layout and drag and drop new files in the zone. Now we have two parts showing different content in the same display. Now we can add the third partition and add content here. Now in total, we have this, this layout with full screen and this layout with three files. But we also want to slideshow different photos and videos between these zones. We can click on any of the zone and select it. Then we can add more media to each zone. And specifically for each zone, you can have different media with different duration and different files. We can quickly add some more files to the zones. Now we have created a custom layout with three zones and a layout with full screen. Once you click on the layout card here, layout settings will pop up on the right hand side. We can give it a name. Now we can give the name to this layout and click on the card. You can see we have two layouts now, one with nine, you can see we have two layouts now, one with 19 second duration, the other one with 20 second duration. Once we have created the content, we can go to the top right section here and click on next. This will open up a list of all the number of screens that are available along with the current status. We can select all the screens at a time and publish to the device. Now we will select the screens we want to target. In this case, we have BK demo and cafe Fire Stick Vertical. These are the two screens that we are targeting the content on. One of the screens is online right now, the other is offline. And the offline screens will fetch the content as soon as internet connection is detected. Now we can go to the top right corner and click on publish. This will publish the playlist to the targeted screens that we have selected. Once we click on continue, it will publish the playlist to the screens. You will see immediately the content will start publishing and downloading on the device. The content has already started playing. Once the content is playing, we can go back to the playlist and add more files. Now we will show you how to upload real time widgets in the layout. We'll go to the widget section here. It will list all the available widgets. We can click on ticker scroller and add a new widget. Here it will list all the available widgets and we can create a new one. We can give it a name. Once we enter the text, it will start creating a preview for us. We can adjust the font, add color and adjust the ticker scroller speed. We can also set the direction and keep it as per the requirement. We can save this. It will show up here by the name of testing, just like we created. Once again, we can drag and drop the widget like this and adjust the height and width as per the requirement. Typically, ticker scrollers work on low height and full width for proper display on the screen. We can adjust the height and the placement of the ticker as per the need. Once we have added a new ticker to the layout, we can preview it and publish to the screens. 
We can also adjust the priority of layout by drag and drop of layout here. This way we can adjust the priority of which layout should play first. In this case we are playing 3 split layout before full screen. And now we can preview it. Now the ticker is displayed along with 3 split layout. We can save it from the yellow button here and it will automatically publish to the screens that are already running the playlist. Once we click on continue, it will publish changes to all the screens that are running this playlist. You can see immediately the content is being displayed on the targeted screen. Now we can schedule the content to run on specific time of the day. We can click on the layout. On the right hand side, we can see the schedule section and add certain timings for the layout to display. We can quickly do this. We want to run it from today to every day from Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Now we have added a schedule to the layout where it will start from 8 am in the morning to 11.30 pm in the evening. Till that time the display will cover this file only and not play any other content. This will allow us to do day parting, week parting or running content on specific time of the day. We can click on save layout and automatically the schedules will be applied. Now we can see this content will not play till the layout schedule is matching. We can also see a small clock here for confirming that the layout is running on a schedule and you can easily identify the schedule from the right hand side section here. Now that was about the playlist. Now we can learn about screens and understand the possible settings we can do. We can exit the playlist from here and the playlist will be previewed here. Now we can go to the screens and understand about the details. We'll go to the screens list here. We can select the screen with the action button here. This will provide us a complete overview of this particular device that we are running on our left hand side. We can see the device is online right now and running the highlighted playlist on the screen. We can check the RAM ROM of the device resolution along with the operating system the device is running on. Now we will learn about configurations and the settings that we can change for particular screen. We can go to the configuration section here, add custom location and update the location of the device. From configuration section, we can change the name of the screen, enable reports for playback reporting and change the orientation. Let's change the name to screen 2 and enable the playback reports so that you can track every playback in the reports for advertising purpose. Built-in app rotation allows us to use horizontal displays in any orientation. We can rotate the screen remotely on any display. Let's try and do this. We can click on 90 degree left and submit. As soon as we do that, the screen will rotate in the desired orientation. We can also flip it opposite. Now you can see without touching the hardware, we can remotely change the orientation of the device allowing us to use landscape screens in any orientation. Let's flip it back to the normal and change other settings. Now we will learn about auto start at boot and dot indicators. As soon as the device starts, digital sign software should automatically start running and start playing content. Software also comes with dot indicators allow you to understand the status of the screen without looking into the CMS. You can go to the screen here and see these three dots allowing you to identify the current status of the device. The top dot indicator indicates the connection of the device with internet. The center indicates the connection with the server or the signage server and the bottom indicator indicates if all the files are successfully downloaded on the device. When we publish new content, the device downloads each file on its local storage and retains it until the next change. All the files that are locally downloaded, we can confirm in our dashboard file section here. Once we go to the file section, we will be able to see all the files that are available in the local storage of the device. 
This allows us to confirm what all files are downloaded on the device. Now we will learn about certain settings of the device. We can go to the settings section here and do certain maintenance work. In case if you want to restart the application, you can remotely send a restart application command to the screen. Let's try and do that. Click on the restart app and continue. As soon as we send a new restart app command, the app reloads and starts playing the content again. Similarly, you can also send remote device restart commands to certain devices. You can also transfer license to another device in case of device failure. If you no longer intend to use the screen and replace the screen with another device, you can delete the screen and repair the license. Now that was all about the particular device settings and now we will see what all filters we can add and how we can identify online and offline screens in a large network. We can go to the screen section. It will list up all the devices that are available in the network with quick filters here. We can select online devices which will give us all the devices that are currently active. In the filter section, we can also check devices by last response so that it is easier for maintenance and we can re rectify devices that are offline for many days. Let's click on last response and click on all and clear the tab here. Now we can see the screens that are not active for many years or many months. We can preview all the screens and reconnect the screens if there is network failure. In this video, we saw how we can start pairing a new device and publish content to the device along with the schedules. Thank you very much.